Hello. Today's video is part of several requests, so I'm going to keep glancing over here to read questions off a notepad sheet. Um, a user who comments on a lot of my videos, Satori, has asked for a bit of a guide to nighttime and vision, which I think is good. Um, that's something that I neglected to get the most out of for quite a while um, in terms of what is emit, what is vision, how does it affect the darkness of a scene. I haven't really sketched this video out too much in advance. Sometimes I think what my main points are going to be. I know I'm going to try and answer his question, so I don't know if this will be a 10-minute video. I don't know if it'll be a 30-minute video. You know I do all my videos in one take, so if I abruptly end it, it's because I've decided it needs a second video. I, I know you're never going to sit here for like 40 minutes. Um, vision. Yeah, so by default, a lot of maps come out as daytime. I'm running Curse of Strahd, as you probably know by now, and I think that lends itself really well to horror. And horror, a big part of horror, is not being able to see. You know, anyone who watches my weekly campaign will know that this is particularly relevant for me at the moment because Curse of Strahd spoilers are about to happen. Um, my Barovia has been plunged into an endless night. So my camp, only about three sessions ago, my campaign got the holy symbol of Ravenkind. They got into a pinch of Strahd in the winery and they used like the daylight effect from it. And Strahd, knowing what it does and being quite smart and still having control over the land, has plunged it into an endless night. The sun's not going to come up again, well, however it does in Barovia, which means no dawn for the amulet to regain charges. So my group are now just starting to go up the Selenka Pass, which I've made a lot bigger and a lot longer and tougher in my campaign. So it is quite a long time until they're going to see the sun again. So my campaign has really just taken a sharp turn into being real, real horror. Even with players that have dark vision, there are ways of still making this relevant. Um, one thing that I'm going to say at the start of this video, in case you watch it all waiting for me to talk about it and end up disappointed, I know there is a mod out there called Perfect Vision, which puts vision into grayscale for um, characters with night vision or dark vision. I've spoken to a couple of people who say that, although it looks good, at the moment, and I think it's Foundry's fault, not the developer's fault, it's apparently very unstable and is likely to break and possibly break permanently and not be continued. So I don't want to make a video and get you all going, oh, brilliant, and then find out that in a week that it's broken, like my old dynamic effects video. Um, so I've made two characters for this video because I don't want to fiddle with any of my existing characters. I've made Harry Human and Edna the Elf. Literally all I've done is click to create a new character, give them a name, give them a picture, and in the case of Harry the Human, I went into his inventory and gave him some torches. So that's all I've done. Um, you've not missed any sort of work workflow. If I add Harry Human on, you've got something that happens with players, but not by default with NPCs. This isn't a vision thing specifically, but it's very important for you to know. If you look at the token for a character, that's either by double clicking by the way, for this whole video, if you notice any of this up here, I'm not talking about that. After I finish this, I'm filming another video straight away about an add-on that I think you're really, really going to love. Um, and that's what all that is up here. You might see enough to work out what it does in this video. Um, yeah, so if I go into the token, we have all the token menus in here. And I feel like these get neglected a bit. And I particularly made a lot of problems for myself in my own campaign, not learning about this earlier. You've got a little tick box in here, link actor data. It doesn't explain well enough. It says represented actor, Harry Human. Link actor data is ticked. That means that this token on the map now in the scene is linked to an actor in one of your modules, in one of your compendiums or lists. I didn't do this for ages. I found that a couple of important NPCs 
were not ticked for me. Like Esmeralda, who's with my group, she's my destined ally. I'm adding her onto every map, and every time I put her on a map, her attacks were breaking again. And what I was basically doing was, I was fixing the token version of her individually on every scene, but because it wasn't linked, it wasn't pushing back. This is why you'll have noticed in Foundry that your player's HP persists from scene to scene. If they go from the ground floor of the winery upstairs and you load the upstairs map and drag them on, it remembers how much HP they've got. But every time you drag a wolf, if you, if you kill five wolves and then you drag a wolf onto the next scene, it doesn't start off dead because they're not linked. So players, you definitely want that linked. Persistent NPCs who are going to move throughout scenes with your group, you also want that ticked in my opinion. The reason I'm telling you about this now is because I found myself having to repeatedly fix the um, vision for one of my NPCs or the, the light that they gave out um, every single scene and it was because this wasn't ticked. Um, We've also got image. I'm not going to talk about in this video. That's about what is their token. You might want nice art. Like I've been in a rush here. So Harry Human has the token. But for the player of um, Halvor in my campaign, that art isn't his token. That's proper full character art. But So you can have different art to the token. Uh, and this is where you define that and the size of it. And if you're mirroring it and all of that jazz. Um, what's their position within the square and do they have any elevation or rotation? Not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about this tab in this video, vision. So your players, I presume if you're here watching this video, it's because you're running a campaign where you want line of sight, visibility, light and dark, things like that to matter. So therefore you would want that ticked, has vision. Dim vision, bright vision, sight angle, dim light, bright light, emission. These are the things we're going to go through. So in the daytime, it it doesn't matter. Um, if I were to change this map to nighttime, now remember as well, we always see a bit more than our players would because we have like the GM fog of war. Um, if I click on Harry, oh, I have chosen a bad scene to show this. This was a bit of a non-combat scene for my campaign. I knew I'd load, I knew I'd load the wrong, uh, a bad map, that's better. This was a non-combat rest area that I wanted my group to see all of, so I let them see all of it and just made it very obscure by fog. So if I click off, this is what it looks like to us as the DM, but to the player, here's what they'd see. Now, they, you can see here, we can still see the standing stone. The player would not see that. They are in a circle. Anything outside of that is black. So he can see this because he has 30. Now, 30 is 30 feet. It knows it's 30 feet because, if I go back to the scene configuration, we have told... This is why it all comes back to the scene. When I made the scene... I told it to be a grid, I specified the size of my grid, and then I told it the grid scale, each square or hex equals five feet. A lot of people don't do that with your maps. It's a really important start point. Making sure these measurements are right ties into the movement your players can have, the size of their tokens, um, the range and size of their spell effects uh, and reticles, vision, things like this, it's, um, it, it all comes back to making sure you've got, even if you don't want grids, um, grid to be visible on your map, define it, make it there so you have scale, and then just um, decrease the opacity, sorry, increase the opacity, so that, no, decrease the opacity, so that um, it's entirely transparent, that's the best way of setting it up. Um, so it knows that he can see 30 feet, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Dim vision. We've got bright vision as well. So if I were to say, okay, he's got dim vision 15 foot and bright vision 15 foot. When I update it, you see the difference. Now this all depends on the campaign you're running 
and the sort of DM you are. Technically, anyone in dim light is partially obscured and attacks are at disadvantage. So, technically, for Harry Human now, he could attack anyone in the brighter circle without penalty, but he could only be at disadvantage in the, um, the dim ring beyond that. For me, and for what I'm doing in my Curse of Strahd, I've kind of gone a bit homebrew with that. Technically, if you are in the dark, in the pitch black, you should be able to see nothing. And my campaign is now pitch black, nighttime. It's not very fun for me to have done all the things I've shown you in these videos and then just have a black screen and have the next three to four months of my campaign be entirely theatre of the mind. So I've gone away from the, D at the 5e rules a little bit to make what I think is a bit of a better experience. So in my campaign at the moment, and I'm telling you this because I think it makes for good atmospheric for when players are in the dark. Um, my, my characters, my players without dark vision, I have their vision set to bright zero, dim vision. Now, I'd be tempted to go with five. If you're out on the Svalich wood at night, now the reason I'm sure I'm keeping it so low is for something I'm going to show you shortly, which is um, about torches and light effects, which I think become massively valuable when you are playing a campaign like this. No player is going to go walking around in Barovia or in Chult with that much vision at night. It's not going to happen because they die very fast or they wouldn't have fun because they can't see anything. So I recommend doing this with dark vision, but you as a DM then need to make sure light sources are available for the players to feel like they can still go and adventure. Um... On the other hand, we have Edna the Elf. So, elves have... I should have looked this up beforehand. 40 foot dark vision? Oh, God, I should have looked it up. It's too much of a pain for me to, to look it up now. But, we'll, we're going to say 30 foot dark vision. I feel like it's 40 or 60, but oh well. If I go back to her vision tab, I don't like to give them um, bright vision. Because dark vision is meant to just be scales of grey, isn't it? Past whatever they can normally see. So I would give them the same 5 foot as everybody else. And then dim 30. Um, now I do that because I'm not going to impose disadvantage on my players. For me, the disadvantage comes from the fact that they can't see anything. They're stuck in the dark. It's Barovia. There's terrifying noises from beyond their vision at all times. So this is what my elf sees compared to Harry Human. And that's another thing I love about Foundry. He can't see her. He has no idea where she is, but she can very easily see him. So when they're playing and talking to each other, players get scared. Now we want our players to be able to see. So if I go back into his token... That's our vision. So vision is how far they can see. Um, and then you have sight angle. I've I've not done this in my campaign because I feel like it would just lead to people spinning their tokens all the time. But you absolutely can, and I can really see the benefit to doing it, have um, the sight only come out at a particular angle. Oh, I've got that surprisingly... Uh, <laughs> Surprisingly accurate. So now he only sees where he's looking. Now I used to have a module called About Face. About Face would turn the actor in the direction that you move. I started using that when I played with... A, for about a year we used top-down tokens in my campaign. I've talked about why I moved to it and why I moved away in another video. Um, but if I were to move Harry to the right... His top-down token would have turned to the right, or in this case, his light would snap to the right. Now, if you were to go into the token, if you like the idea of doing it this way, 
you can go into token and click lock rotation. Now what that means is when I t when I move him to the side, at the moment if I had about face installed, when I move right, the whole token will rotate. I can't remember which way you're going to see this, but his beard would flick up onto the side and he's lying on his back if he's moving to the right. And that ends up looking stupid. Lock token rotation means that his picture will stay locked in the same position, even though his token is facing different ways. So if you had this combination of a light cone with that ticked, then yeah, as a player moves right, that little emit of light uh, of vision comes out. I don't know if you'd like that. I'd be I'm really interested to know in the comments if you think you'd use that or if you like to have because players technically have the freedom of the five foot space they're in they can for free at any time look around and look behind them so diff different different dm styles i guess but i i definitely see the value in doing it let's put that back okay next up we have um dim and bright radius this is how much light you're giving out. Um, so in this, I can go, well, I want to emit 20 foot of dim light. Now, that basically increases his vision because he's now throwing light out in the dark and he can see further. Um, I only really like using these with lighting effects. Now, the more I think about it, the more I think I will end this video in a minute because the next, all the stuff to do with light I'll do as part of the module I can't remember the name of. So that's why I'm going to end it in a second. Let me have a look and see what we've got here. So setting a, night, um, a map to night, we've covered configuring vision. I'm about to talk to about the modules in a second. And I'm going to talk about torches in that video as well. So yeah, I'm actually going to end this video here only because I'm going to upload another one in just a second, um, a part two of this, which covers all of the modules involved. So I will see you in a second.